Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the uh, MATLAB implementation of the image processing on the hex bug. Uh, here's just the code. I'm just going to go over it kind of briefly, and then I'll uh, put it on the website. And I'm going to put the frames somewhere. I'm not sure where I could put all the hex bug tracking frames. But basically what you need is a collection of uh, image frames um, with sequentially ordered so that the uh, program, so the MATLAB can know which what order to drag them in and then load them and then do the processing on them. Uh, the order is not particularly important, but it's a nice way to got some continuity in what you're looking at. Um, I'll either put those either on the MATLAB Central or I'll find some way to do it on my website. But anyways, here's the code. So this is just kind of a way to go to the directory of interest and then this is the kind of the important one where you run the DIR function to uh, basically store in a structural array all the frames. This is important so it allows you to loop through and go frame by frame without having to type in any names or anything like that. My search just looks for anything that has PNG at the end of it because these are PNG files. Now, as in the other tutorial, make sure you watch that one first, uh, is what we're going to do is we're going to create an average template over the frames where there's no bug, where it's basically just uh, background, right? So what we'll do is we'll do get 20 frames. Um, I kind of define the image. And what it's going to do is it's going to do IM read and load in each individual frame. So if we look at, say, the first frame, the name of that first frame, there's the name of the first frame, and it's going to read that in. And then what it's going to do, now that's a, if we, if we look at it, it is, it's actually some big three, to, um, if we look at the size of that image, size of image temp, it's actually, um, it's a two-dimensional array with three dimensions to it, so it's like a three-layer stack, because it's a uh, color image, it's an RGB image, and so we don't care about that, we just care about the first layer, so I just take the first uh, two-dimensional matrices, store that out, and then, and then basically create this image stack of all 20 uh, frames. Then I just take the mean value along that, uh, that stack dimension, and what that gives us is this nice uh, average background template. So here's our single frame, and here's the average frame. When you look at it on your own, you're going to see this one's, the average frame is kind of messy looking, and that's kind of how it's supposed to look. It's kind of blurred out a little bit. That is, it's supposed to be free from any anomalies in a particular frame. Like, see here, there's a little bit of a fold in this one. It's gone here. All these edges are kind of gone. It's just a, a cleaner way to avoid any particular anomalies in any particular frames by averaging over some subset to define this average template of background. All right? So there we go. Now what I'm going to create is the Gaussian filter. Now what I use is a function called fspecial. It's kind of a nice way, quick way to generate a particular masking of whatever you want. In this case, I use the Gaussian one, and I define the sigma and the size. So it's a 20 by 20, and it has a sigma of 10. It's a Gaussian distribution. And let's go ahead and implement that. It creates this thing called Gauss filter, and here's what it looks like. As I showed in the other tutorial, it's this 20 by 20 array of values, and they're just color coded so you can see what they are, but here's this little distribution on it. Then I define this other one. This is just um, an object so that we can dilate the images. So when I got a single coordinate point, it's not visible at a single coordinate point. So I just dilate it out so you can see it. And that's all this is about. Not particularly important. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's look at a single frame. Let's just look at frame 150. What we're going to do is first load in our image, uh, save it as a double, and then plot that image so we can see what a raw image looks like. Okay, let me just close this real quick. Okay, so here's our raw image, right, in this uh, f false color, uh, a jet color, color map jet. Now, uh, I do different types of tracking. There's a hard tracking where it's got a lot of noise in it, and then there's no tracking where I block out and don't track for certain segments and add a little bit of noise to another one. But I'm just going to show you how to do it on its own, and then you can go ahead and mess with the details of this code. I, lay I describe out how to do it for each one. But let's look at the first thing. We got our background image, right? And so the easiest way to do it is you just subtract it away. So we'll just subtract that from our raw image. And what we end up with is this background subtracted one. Now, if you look at it on your own, you can see there's like a little anomalies, little, you know, because it's an average template, it's not going to be perfectly matched to this particular image. So you're going to have some stuff that's kind of these little artifacts all over the place. So what we do is we apply our Gaussian filter. And because we're filtering in two dimensions, we do filter two. We apply our filter to our image. This is our subtracted image. And because, you know, we're convolving and, you know, you got these edge effects that when you convolve around the edges, that you could mess with the image size. And so you could force it to generate this, an image of the same size. And that's what I do there. And then let's take a look at that. And here's that Gaussian smooth image that we saw before. And it looks pretty nice and pretty smooth and clean and all that. Um, now, we want to look at this image. And what is the histogram of this image? 
Well, we can see that most of the values are a little bit above zero, a lot of them around there, and then there's some values that are less than that that go below there. So we'll just threshold safely around negative 15. I mean, we may lose some of these points here around the perimeter, but we don't care about that. We're just trying to get the center of the hex bug. You may care about that, but in our case, we don't. So we just pick a conservative negative 15 value. And now let's plot that image, and that's what we get. The, bl the blue is zero, and this reddish brown, I guess, is uh, values of one. So this is our thresholded image. Now, what we want to do is we got these values of zeros and ones, and we want to find the center of that value, the center of this uh, center of this object. Well, because it's this binary image, there's a very simple way to do it. We just go to that image and find all the x and y coordinates of those values of one. Then we get these values here. Then we just take in the x dimension, the mean value, and in the y dimension, the mean value. What that's going to do is basically, uh, well, of course, threshold it to keep it an, a, as a discrete number, I mean, as a, a, a integer number. Um, but what it's going to do is find the center in the x direction, the y direction, which will then be the center of the object. If we didn't do any tracking, it's just going to randomly grab any point. Just, you know, that's just one way to do it. We could just get, gather no point, but we'd rather just give it a random point. It makes it a little more fun during the common filtering. And then last but not least, we just we create a new image and then dilate it so we can see that coordinate point. And then uh, we plot it here. So this little diamond in the middle is where an enlargement of where the center coordinate is for that bug or where the mean coordinate it is for that bug. And there we go. So let's see what it looks like frame by frame by frame as we run through this. Let's lower this value down to 1. And let's, let's just skip. Let's go by 2s. It'll go a little bit faster. And there we go. So there's the image. Here's the raw image. There's nothing in it. There goes my arm. You can actually see my hand pretty good because it got filtered out. And then there's the tracking, right? There's the diamond tracking. Pretty good smoothing. Pretty good little tracking. And overall, pretty good. Pretty confident with how this works. And so this is very good tracking. You wouldn't need the common filter for this, frankly. But um, if you have bad tracking or if it's noisy or something like that, you will. And so by I do, if you go through here, you see a lot of different ways in which I add noise or don't do tracking for particular subsets and it allows you a really good way to kind of explore the utility of the common filter. Okay, so uh, remember to subscribe and go check out the next video on the two-dimensional common filter. See ya.